all right guys welcome to the channel this is uh this will be my first video well technically my second or third or fourth now because i've tried this a few times and i was having uh issues with my headset i'm technically illiterate i guess um we're gonna give this a go uh this will be the first video it's gonna be pretty much like a walkthrough of vp's rock um kind of letting you know what I was thinking with the design process, how I came up with certain holes, why I did this or that. Um, I don't really know how much interest there will be for this channel, so I'm just kind of winging it. Uh, the hope is, though, if, if there is enough interest, I would love to eventually um, field some questions from people who want to make fantasy courses, maybe help out the early designers um, to get going. I thought of doing this YouTube channel because... I was getting a whole bunch of messages through Xbox uh, from people asking different uh, designing questions, uh, just random stuff here and there about how I did this or that. And uh, it's pretty tough to type it all out when you're uh, using the messenger on Xbox. And I figured, well, this might save some time, first of all. And then secondly, if there is enough interest in fantasy course design, uh, then maybe I could highlight some of your guys' courses, go through them, uh, tell you what I like, what I don't like, maybe what what can maybe help it get more plays. Um, it's kind of a weird subject in general with uh, fantasy courses. It's really hard to critique because the beauty of fantasy courses is you could do whatever the hell you want. Like there is no no doing it wrong you know it's it's completely up to you that's what's awesome about making a fantasy course um but what i could potentially do is maybe tell you how to how to get more plays kind of what to do that i've seen that people like and dislike about courses and kind of give you some of the knowledge i have um and then along the way too just like simple uh design techniques that that helped me out along the way uh, but anyway, this first video is just going to be sort of a walkthrough on my newest course. I um, guess I should start with the initial concept. Uh, this is actually the third iteration uh, for me of this course. Uh, in TGC 19, I did a course called Mulligan's Temple. Um, it was it was pretty rough to be honest, but it was the first course of mine that became uh the apex sound fantasy course of the week and that's when i was like i got really pumped like oh man this is wow i'm getting some recognition it was a pretty shitty course to be honest but um i took that initial concept and i tried to redo it on 2k21 because i thought i had learned quite a bit more about how to design um and I made some improvements to it, but I still wasn't really satisfied with the final result. So, EP's Rock is technically uh, Mulligan's Temple 3, um, conceptually. Uh, basically, what I wanted to do was, I wanted to, as you start the course, you're sort of in a cave. And all you see is this big, giant rock structure in front of you. And... Along the front nine, you, you're kind of seeing this big rock structure, and you're getting gradually closer to it. And then somewhere around the back nine, you're going to be going under it, uh, through it, underneath it, over it, on top of it, and then finally past it. Um, so that was kind of the concept. Um, I think this is the last iteration of it now. I think I, I finally got decent enough with the designer to finally get that concept like fully realized out of my head and i think yeah this I, i'm done with this idea basically now it took me three tries we're we're good now um i have got quite a bit of backlash on this course um it's pretty difficult there are a few holes uh here and there that i don't particularly like how they turned out i think they're okay uh but there's a lot of people who are just aren't fans of it um but it is what it is, you know? Um, but anyway, so this is the starting hole here. Um, I guess I should go into, not only was it an EP's rock, but um, 
also I was going for an ancient golf course. So I, I couldn't use any modern objects or anything, no stairs, no bridges, nothing. Like I kind of held myself to that because I wanted it to be ancient. Like this could exist 10,000 years ago, potentially. That was kind of the look I was going for. So the first thing I had to do was, well, shit, there's tees. Those are modern. So to the left and right of the player where the tees are, I had to cover them with something. So I ended up just covering them with rocks. Uh, this one I kept as EP. It's kind of a symbol there you see in front of me. Um, I thought if I did that 18 times, it's, that's a little narcissistic. Uh, <laughs> so I eventually, uh, for the rest of them, I made them the, the whole numbers. But I wanted to make them so that you don't really notice that they're numbers or not. They're just kind of rocks everywhere. Essentially, the whole point was just to hide the T's, which were modern objects, because it took you out of the time frame that, in my head, this was supposed to be. This was supposed to be just an ancient course, overgrown, uh, I want to say like South American jungle kind of vibe. So that's what I was going for. This first hole is, it's a par four, and it's a drivable par four, because it's so downhill. I personally always really like to start courses uh, with an easier hole. And if I can with the drivable par four, that's great. Cause I want the player to score early. I really want them like get in the lead, feel good about how they're doing. And that'll kind of kickstart the fun. Uh, I'll take the fun away later. You know, let, let's start them out right though. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to try to hit the best, uh, straightest shot we can here. This is essentially just like a a check of your tempo. If you have good tempo, you hit the shot. If you don't, you're getting wet. This is nice. Look at you. So I, I could have leaned that over a little more. This work. is actually where I am right now is essentially where uh, part four is or pin four, which is the hardest. But we'll see if we can get. I think we can get a bird here still. We have to get over the hill and then under the hill. Oh, it's going pretty fast. Oh boy, that is cruising. Here we All right. have a 17 foot putt. Lovely to see us. There we go. So we start with the birdie. Already, good stuff. Uh. The second hole, it's it's a par five, but it's actually it's a hard par five. I don't know if you can see. I should have put it in designer mode so you can see, but basically on this course especially, I made every hole right next to the last one. And there's little walkways everywhere. I really wanted to make this a walkable course, which is always the challenge I try to do. And I think that's a really good advice for um, new fantasy designers. To me, I always try to make them walkable. I think it's a cool thing to do, and I have fun with it personally. But I think it's a good idea because it really makes you edit yourself. Like, you can't go 300 yards down on on a drive um, it, unless you're going to make it walkable. I mean, if you want to put the time in to make it walkable then yeah, do that. Um, to me, it just helps me edit myself. Like, oh, I don't I don't want to build that staircase down there. This, this is just too high. Um, it's kind of funny. Yeah, that, that's how I edit myself is I have to make this walkable. Do I really want to have this crazy distance that I have to build uh, some kind of structure to get down to? So the play on this one, if we look on the map, uh, you could lay up with a three iron or even even a three wood, hit it down here, that's perfect. You're still not going to get there in two. If you want to play it safe, the next shot would be over here. But uh, you could take your driver. If you hit a good driver, hit anywhere around here, then you're in for two. It's it's still, you're probably still hitting a three iron in, maybe a, a five wood from there. The shortcut is over here. It's tough to hit, if you can see, it's a narrow fairway. Um, but it does give you maybe like a, a seven iron in, which it can be worth it sometimes. It all depends on the wind. So we're gonna take a look over here. 
The wind's kind of helping us, so I think I am going to take this route. You kind of have to bend it around this uh, column, if you will. Not a terrible swing, but it should do, maybe, get a bounce. Well, we're still oh, okay. After that one. Let's, I will take let's some luck on that one. Here for the next shot. Better to be lucky than good. All right. 176, so I mean, it's going to take off 34. So that puts us at... But the wind, that, that kind of feels right. But we have a gnarly lie that we're on right now. So this could be trouble. We're just, we're going to hope for the best. Actually, that's probably a little too far. I got some more room on that side of the green. Let's go kick right, kick right. All right. Ooh, that might fall off. Okay, nope, we're, we're okay. Green. okay Not the easiest putt in the world, but we didn't deserve an easy putt after missing the secret fairway. Oh, this one could drop. There we go. Felt like, felt like I earned that eagle. Nicely done. And after that one, you're three under. That wind is picking so let me up. Think. This next hole, right on this one. it's par three, downhill, quite a bit. I actually like this green. I, ge I generally don't like the greens I make. I always critique them quite a bit. This is one of my favorite greens because I don't do greens very well personally. I find them hard to do. Um, for me, I have issues with uh, pin placements because I, I always try to do my pins one to four, easy to hard, so that all different uh, styles of players and different levels of players can play it and have a good time. So I end up make my problem is I end up always making where my pins like so obvious, like, oh, that's where that one is, that where that one. On this one, I think I did a good job of kind of uh, disguising it. So pin one's right here. I think pin two is right around there. Pin three is here. And then pin four is here because it's kind of tough to hit. But either way, you have this uh, big island here hitting down too. Oh, one thing I should mention. So when you're creating a, a downhill par three, I don't know if you can see, but yeah. So what you always want to do is, if you can, uh, you want to have the view of where you're hitting. I know sometimes it's hard, especially on a fantasy course, uh, with all the height differences you're going to do, the elevation changes, it's hard to see where you're going. But I, you really want, if you can, uh, to be able to see where you're hitting, just straight off the tee. So, so one way to do it is, I don't know if you can see, but on the very front of the tee box there, it's getting red. And what I did was I basically grabbed it and sloped it down as much as I could without affecting uh, the tee shot. So if you could pull down the front of the land in front of your uh, tee shot, it'll open up the view a little bit. That's the, the tip there that I try. All right, so we got 214 minus 33. I think the 176 will get there. Actually, it might throw a little off, a little backspin too. Maybe play it off the backboard if we can. Maybe I would say this shot slow for whatever reason. Well, better luck Almost on the green. Second shot on the third. Sometimes the Wolverine controller, as nice as it is compared to the stock, you you get stuck if you pull it too fast and that happens okay, you have to hit it 15 times looking pretty good well there we'll call a par a win there actually on all my courses uh, i'm never mad about getting a par and fourth hole coming up so on this hole you have this uh coliseum looking thing right in front of you it it looks pretty but it's a it's a stay away from me object. It's uh, you might want to get a closer look, but you don't want to get that close of a look. Um, we look on the map here. It's it's pretty supreme or severe uh, dogleg. 
the play is right here. As long as the wind's kicking not into your face, you could always hit this shortcut here, and it really gives your approach a better shot. Technically, this can be a reachable par 4 on a couple of the pins um, if the wind's straight at your back in the right way. But I really didn't want it to be a reachable par 4 when I was designing it. I realized that, oh, it kind of is. So I did throw these giant trees in front of you that you can see right here to hope to like discourage the player from not doing that. But technically, if the wind's really kicking at your back, you could do that. Um, that wasn't my plan, though. But I like to take this shortcut here. It's one of the easier shortcuts on this course, and it's a good way to nice cut off to like 40 yards on there. your approach. There's really no danger in taking it. Yeah, we're about 115 yards away. So we're looking at... Oh, an, a, another kind of reason why I placed this hole here is I knew that there would be this rock structure in the background, and I, a lot on this course I was really thinking about what is in the background of every hole, like what you're seeing. I really wanted it to be a, a big open course because I knew I'd be building a bunch of stuff and that would take a lot of data. And so I, I wanted, uh, I was thinking about a lot, like the sight lines everywhere. And so I liked where this green was because it, it gave you a look on the back nine of where, where you're going to be eventually. That might not be the best for, you know, courses you want to make but for this one in particular I thought I liked that I was doing that I thought it was a good idea it's actually a pretty okay. decent tip now that I think about it um oh, that'll do. you're always going to be working to save the data right, wherever you can so if you build three. something that takes like a lot of data from you think about your Let's routing and think about um, seeing what you built from different angles because you built it already it's going to take up that much data so if you can put other greens around it from other sides it's just less stuff parts. you have to build to make the background of your whole of your course more interesting So hole five and six were the last two holes I did. Um, I knew kind of where they were going to be, but didn't really know how the landmass was going to be. Didn't know the strategy on it. Last second, I kind of built this uh, volcano here. And you can, if you want, to try it. If you hit it in this volcano, no matter what, if you get into the volcano, you're going to be on the green in one, and you're going to be hitting a putt for Albatross. Because of the variability of the speed uh, when you're hitting against just the speeds that go in, because you're going to hit the front rock and you're the back rock, and it's it never really hits the consistent speed going down this lava tube I created. Um, sometimes it's on the upper tier, sometimes it's on the lower tier of the green, but for sure every time you will be on the green in one if you hit it. Um, to me, it's super gimmicky. Uh, I almost, I, I knew it was a gimmicky idea when I started it, but I was like, ah, oh, let's just see if it, it's a crazy idea. Let's see if I, I can actually pull it off. And then I spent like five or six hours one day seeing if it would even work. And then when it did work, I was like, oh, I got to keep this now, you know? But I figured it's so out of the way, you would never think to hit it in a volcano, you know, like it, it, it doesn't affect the rest of the course. I mean, it is super gimmicky, but if no one ever finds out about this volcano thing, great. You know, if people do, that's more better. Uh, but I kept it because it's not really pertinent to the hole. So the play on this hole, it, it gets real narrow down here, and you're actually sloped down towards the rocks, which can, which can send you in the water. But if you look at the map, it's actually pretty easy to get it that far. So we're just going to send it right this way. This is actually a, a, a fairly easy par 5 on its own. Like you don't need the lava shortcut. This one's looking that might be too far. And nicely no, done. Good. We're back in the fairway. 
And this is about 170 yards to the pin. So with this green in general, this isn't my favorite green. I I have trouble with greens in general, but this isn't my favorite. A lot of it was kind of done to work the, uh, well, the lava tube secret so that regardless, the ball will roll down here onto the green. And like I was saying, because of the variable speeds, sometimes it'll be on the upper tier, sometimes it'll be on the lower. Uh, two, two pins are down here, two pins are up here. It's kind of luck on the draw sort of thing. Turned out all right, though. Uh, for being one of the last holes I did, I was actually really pleased with how it came out, because that volcano thing's pretty cool. And I think it's cool that most people won't even know about it. Can we get a bounce to the right, please? Safely on the green. We could take this putt down. We could go to six under. Ah, oh, that pool no. might hit too hard. No, and we're this okay. Is, uh, your look at birdie. That one drops, and that's your second birdie in a row. The makings of a streak, perhaps. Looks like a par four for this one. So if I remember right, this was pretty much the last hole I was working on. Um, basically, before I had built this this giant uh, pyramid here that you see, I had built it knowing it was going to be a tee box. I thought it fit the theme well. It ended up being really hard to put the staircase on, but... Uh, having the pyramid here was also key to make making the whole course walkable because there's a staircase that goes up to the left and that's the next tee box at the very top and then that staircase goes all the way down to the right. Um, so when I started this hole, I thought, well, we need to go somewhere near this pyramid. And then uh, I kind of thought, well, that'd be cool if we could go like under the pyramid. Um, like, why don't we try that, you know? Um I know that it causes a lot of camera angle issues, and a lot of times when you're down there, you can't see your putt. But knowing that, I still did it because I'm always trying to do new things I haven't seen uh, done on courses before. And I thought this was a this is a good enough idea where it's like you know you might not be able to see your putt land, but I haven't seen this before, and I want to give it a go. So also too on on all my courses, I'm always gonna let you hit your driver. But it's not always the best idea to do. I, I think there's a lot of players out there who they they don't really think about what they're doing. They just take out the driver and waiver pointing. I'm going to hit my driver there. And so I want to give everyone that option to do that, even if it's not smart at all. Like, I always want you to be able to hit your driver straight forward from the tee. So this one... You're going to end up in the bunker, most likely. Or worst case scenario, you're going to roll right off the rock into the water there. But if the winds are your back, you know, you could, you can get up there to that flat zone. It, it's not an awful idea sometimes. But also it needed to connect, if you could see that staircase I built. So it made the course walkable, so I put land up there. Um, I think the best play on this hole is it's nice and sloped right here. So you hit your three wood or even a partial driver, and it'll put you right on this nice flat spot. But the most fun route to take is uh, right down here with your driver. You got to bend it around these trees a bit. And this, this gives you the best approach. But yeah, it's a bit risky, but it gives you the best approach. There we go. And if you're doing shortcuts like that, uh, also now I'm thinking about it, you want to you want to slope the, the player. Give give them slope uh, on each side of the fairway. You kind of just lower the fairway in the middle, and that'll let them stay on the fairway. Um, that's another thing too I should mention. For me personally, it, making fantasy courses, uh, I always want to make things look harder than they are, but actually make them easy. Because ultimately, how you get good reviews and how you get a lot of plays is you make your course look hard, but you actually make it easy. And anytime you can make it easier for the player, do that. And you do that a lot by um, sloping your land. Um, what do you call it? It's not raising it, but the opposite of raising it. So you're always sloping the player into the green or into the fairway, wherever you can. Whereas when you raise land, 
um, that'll do the opposite. That'll push them off the green. That'll push them off the fairway. You have to do that subtly, though, because you can't make it obvious that you're making it easy. It, you have to make it look hard, but you have to give the player bounces if they miss here or there. Like, you have to push them in the right way. And like, for instance, too, this is pin one. This is the easiest pin we're looking at here. And you can see, like, there's a lot of ways that you can miss on this shot. But they're all going to kind of push you towards the pin. Um, whereas pin two, which is harder, right here, there's not a lot of ways you can miss on this one. You're going to get pushed the wrong direction each way. And also what I, what I really like about this hole is pin three and four, pin three is back here, pin four is back here, is it like eliminates any pin hunting at all because you're going to hit the, the front of that rock. Um, a little bit of dickish. I know that that's a dick move of me, but I love that. Like it, it eliminates any pin hunting. You have to be really smart about this one. Um, so that's why I kind of stuck with this idea. I, I like how it turned out. Anyway, we'll stop talking and just hit the shot. This should be all right. This one's looking good. Great work. Nice approach on that one. This one's just three feet. Nice stroke on that one. That's your fourth birdie of the day. And after that one, you're at six under. Oh, man, it's going to be a long video. I'm talking a lot. There. We got a head wind all right. This um, so this is one of my least favorite holes. It's probably my second least favorite. Uh, I knew going into this where the where the top of that pyramid that i was just showing you and i had built that aqueduct down there and that giant rock to the right that is the the sandy tee box i had that all built and i knew that this was like a connector hole like this was going to be the tee box and that's the green what are we going to do in between um i think the change in elevation was too much and it's a little too much of a guessing game personally i don't like that I think it should never be a guessing game with elevation. You should you should kind of know how the ball is going to react in the air. And I think this was just too far. Um, so I, I kind of messed up on that. But I had boxed myself in by making that green and then <laughs> making that tee box. It's like, well, uh, technically I could have made land all the way out here. I could have made it much easier. I went with the hard route. Now I'm kind of second guessing that because this hole's just a bit too hard. Like, even layups on this hole are really tough. So the wind's at me, so I think I'm going to do this. This could even be long. Whoa, that was just a really awful shot. Setting up here in the deep stuff. So because we hit such an awful shot, we're just going to lay up here. Which, honestly, it's probably the smartest move okay, either way. A par on shot. this one is not too bad. So yeah, these kind of Stonehenge-looking things, um, they were, they're only there to make the course walkable. If you see the next hole that we go on, that's the tee box right there, if you could see. So this, this just made it walkable. And then those aqueducts were... It's one of those ideas that I had that was like, oh, that's decent. Could I make that work? And it's like, oh, yeah, that that looks decent enough. I was actually super stoked about, about it at first. This was like one of the original things I worked on other than the first hole and uh, EP's rock in general. Um, I had this idea, and I was like, oh, that turned out cool. But looking back now, this is like one of my least favorite holes, and I'm not super impressed with those anymore. But we kept them. They're, they're sort of cool. See if we could uh, not get wet here. This is this is just a tough approach either way. It no, that could be <laughs> bad. That, that could be bad. Oh, uh, we'll take it. That? We'll take it. We'll take I it. I think I'll let your putting do the talking here from way out. Looking really good. A little bit too much power. I might have got robbed putting. there a little bit. And after that hole, you've gone up to five under. You got a right to left cross breeze going on this hole. This is probably like the most standard, realistic uh, hole on the whole course, and it's a very small green. I usually make big greens. This one's pretty small, but I, I like how it turned out, because um, up here you see this pin one. This is the easiest. Pin two is right here. 
not quite as hard. Pin three is a little bit harder because it falls off on the edge there. And then pin four is right in here. It's just barely legal by most standards. So uh, this is just a, you know, very regular par three. Um, but it's a little different because of the view you see from the tees and you're hitting from a beach. I had heard actually someone on Twitch, like, uh, I was lurking a bit and I saw someone on Twitch playing this and they were just like, you're hitting out of the rough and now you're hitting out of the beach. This is just bullshit. Why did this person spend so much time on this course? This is absolutely bullshit. And I was just like, I don't know. Can't please everyone. That was my thought. And I think, uh, if you're going to be a fantasy designer, Great the more swing. you think outside the box, the better. Because if if not, just make regular courses, you know? Just there's make, lie, which was kind of make some regular lie. courses. Like, but not if you're going to go fantasy, long putt left, though. All right, here we go. think this outside the box. Do, do some stuff that you've never seen before. Why not, you know? What's the worst that's going to happen? <laughs> Actually, it's funny. Right. I can tell you the worst is going to happen. On my last course... Um, that was a good putt. EP's landing. Uh, okay, five, I got some five, random... Five, messages through xbox of these people that told me it was the worst right, course they've nice ever played nice and they were so field. angry that i made it and they must have looked up my name my real name uh through comments on youtube videos i think and and so they attempted to dox me for it uh they they actually found a picture of another guy with my same name and sent me those pictures <laughs> in the xbox message and they were, they were like here Haha, ha, got you. And I'm just like, whoa. All right. Yeah, people are weird, man. You got to watch out. Um, so this one. This has two shortcuts. The first shortcut, you can definitely get right down to the green. Get yourself an eagle putt, maybe. I personally can never hit this shot. I just don't don't have the swing plane or consistency. I just get too nervous when I have to hit it, so I don't. Um, up here, your driver is fine. Like, I actually think it's a good shot to hit your driver up here. It's uphill. You'll be somewhere right around where your pointer is. And then it's downhill from there. And you can just roll it right onto the green, honestly, with like a, a three wood at that point. But um, I always like to take the, the center, the kind of midway shortcut here. To me, it's, it's the least amount of risk. You can hit it. Majority of the time, even if you don't hit it, you're not in too much trouble. Stuff here. Okay, nothing like being back on the fairway. Good stuff. Then we got a nice and then you basically have like a pitch in, you know? 15, 112, 102. A little wind. Maybe we'll throw some loft into it. But... Oh, another reason why I put this hole here in the first place, because I'd already built this whole cave section that you see in front of you, and that waterfall... And later on, um, you're going to have the opportunity to hit through that waterfall. And I wanted to make sure that before we got to that hole, that you knew that what you're seeing in front of us, that there was a waterfall there. So I wanted it, I wanted it to feel familiar, um, like kind of place you on the map without having the view I do as a designer of seeing it from overhead. So that was the whole reason I put this hole here, honestly, with this view is oh, my controller is being a, being a BI. It goes all day. All right. And if this drops, you'll get your birdie here. So good. That was a fantastic shot. Not doing too bad here. Sitting at six under par after that one. All right, pop a nice one out in the fairway on this one. This hole is tricky because I purposely put the fairway straight into the rock and sloped it down a little bit, too. So, you could easily hit the fairway and go right into the rock, right into the water. I also put this rock here because you need to uh, bend it this way, and if you do, that rock's sort of in your way. Um... It's, yeah, it's another dick mood of mine, but I actually like it. I really like that one. <laughs> that one's fun. Um, I think the move's always to go here. I think worst case scenario, even if you hit a bad shot, you'll um, be in the rough. But it's the shortest distance. So I think it's worth the risk to just go here. 
I might be in the rough. No, but I put enough backspin on it where we're fine. You've done well. Setting up here. Uh, I guess I haven't talked about uh, greens away. enough. Um, greens to me are I, I they're tough. They're to me I always have a hard time with them. I, um, so maybe I might not be the authority on them. But like I I don't know if I mentioned, but I always try to do pin one to pin four. Pin one being the easiest, pin four being the hardest. Um, and try to think of of different strategies to play the whole four four different ways through the pin so i want i want basically if you do that well it gives the course replayability um also too um it's a good way to make your pin ones easiest so that even the beginners can play it but then make your par or your pin fours so hard that the best players in the world won't get bored on your courses so that's always a struggle it's it's really hard I, I try to do my best on it but that's it's what i'm thinking when i'm making greens and that's also probably why my greens are honestly probably larger than they need to be or should be um because i need room to kind of have four different strategies for the whole so yeah i'm probably not the authority on greens uh it's one of my weaker points but I think we can just send this here. Hopefully this one will bounce to the right. Good job. We're on the green. Here's a putt to go to seven under. Also, it doesn't matter much, but I put these trees here along this, um, along the edge of this peninsula sort of thing, because I didn't really like the outside of EP's rock around this area. I don't, I don't think I did a good job of blending all the rocks together, but I needed to, cause that's the, that's the inside of the cave. I had to block that and I just didn't like how the outside looked. So I just put some trees here to kind of hide that a little bit. Oh, that was almost in. If you don't like how something looks that you built a uh, good way to hole. hide it is with okay. trees, Scores you know, currently clocking in at six under par. Let's see what happens. Um, get a long par four for this one. This this hole was a bit of a transition hole because we've been working our way along the coast the whole way, and so this was going to be the hole to where we get basically to inside E piece rock. And so this is a transitional hole. I kind of made it island hoppery a bit, which I don't like island hopper holes all that much. But there's only one on this. Well, there's a couple now I think about it, but um, it's what it is. The the thing about this one, I don't know if you get what settings you guys play it on, but all I see is the elevation of, of the green or where the pin is at. So I know that's 25 feet down. And looking at it, this is even 20 feet down from that. So... This little island section like has to be 50 feet down. This is a really, really tricky hole, uh, depending on what um, settings you're playing on. It's tough to read where everything's at. A really safe play is three wood, right around here. That's a safe play. Sometimes you could bend it around that tree to that side. You don't want to be stuck behind the rock on that left side. Um, but this actually, this shot goes farther than you think it will, but I'm still going to try to hit it. Oh. Okay. We're smart, good. Smart shot. Back in the fairway. Now we, uh, now we got to Then this is another example of a green that's just entirely yards. too large. I kind of messed up there. It is what it is. One of the things I did that kind of makes me a bit of a jerk is I blended this green straight to the fairway that goes straight into a rock that goes straight into the water. So the whole point of doing that was telling the player, do not hit your shot slow. Um, occasionally I like to do stuff like that just to up the, uh, make it more interesting, you know, up, up the challenge factor. <laughs> I'm glad I went too far on here, upping the challenge factor because I put pin four right here. So if you hit your, your putt even slightly too hard it's going straight into the water which yeah i'm a jerk it is what it is though so we got 181 i think the wind will take this right back where it needs to be 
And please, sir, may I have a bounce to the right? Yeah, it wasn't the best nice thing approach. in the world. Good stuff. 14 feet to the cup from here. A little Ooh. too hard. Looking Can't good. hit them all. And all right. One drops. And There's your par. So this is a, a par three. This was something I had in my head really early on. Um, because I had to kind of imagine like how how are we going to get into this rock that we saw the front of from the first tee? And I kind of saw in my head like, well, there has to be it kind of has to be like a, a par three, but it has to be downhill and there has to be kind of a big opening so you you kind of see inside the rock. And that's essentially what this hole is. Um, the very giant green again. Um, play wise, I uh, you definitely don't want to hit it too long. I wanted to do that to throw more challenge into it. Uh, but yeah, hitting it too long is going to take you right down the rocks, right down to the next tee, and I OB'd that on purpose so that you got to go right back to the tees. Yeah, this is another one of those like transitional holes that's sh more showing you where you're going than anything else. It's kind of just nice shot. That'll, that'll do. showing you where on the map you are. All right, here we go. This one for the birdie. Okay, so this is a putt I'm probably not going to hit. For me, I'm, I'm always kind of happy to par this one, you know. A lot of the holes on my courses, I'm always happy to par. Especially on this course, I've, man, that this 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 and course is just full of blow-up holes. Um, I've seen some people get really mad online about it. Four. So, I don't even know if I want to go too far about this one. Um, I knew one of the original concepts I was going to do, I was going to make at least a couple of holes in a cave. I knew that was going to be a, a lot, a lot to bite off. It was going to be really hard to do right, but I wanted to do it. It was, you know, part of the original concept. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but I just knew I had to. Originally, I had no holes in the ceiling because it, it, to be a true cave, you can't have holes in the ceiling, right? Um... That did not work. It just made it made it so that you could hit your shot, but then you wouldn't see it flying at all whatsoever. And it was it took away from seeing where your ball was going, and it just ultimately made it less fun. And if you're going to be a fantasy designer, yeah, do some crazy stuff, stretch the limits, but always try to keep in mind that the people who are playing it, you want them to have fun. Uh, so I think I found a workaround in that I exposed some holes. I made some strategic holes in the cave so that as your ball is flying through the air, you're going to get views of what's happening. So you, you're not entirely blind when you're doing it. Um, and I think I did a decent job. My best advice though, is if you're watching this and you want to start making fantasy courses, just don't make don't make cave holes. Don't do it. It's really really hard. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's no reason to try. You know. Save it for later after you've done a few other courses. It it's tough to get right. Uh, now I'm thinking. Um, second thing, if you are gonna make a cave hole, do not put the roof of the cave in until you've completely planted. You've completely sloped everything on that hole. When you know the hole is completely done and you're completely happy with it, then put the ceiling on. Because you can't, as a designer, I mean, you can, but it's so hard to maneuver the camera around and plant stuff and slope stuff when you have a rock ceiling. It just will not work. It's so hard to do. So do not close your cave until you're completely whole or done with the hole. Um... Sorry about that little tangent, but if anyone wants to make cave holes, uh, they should listen to that. Um, I've seen a lot of people actually play the hole this way, and I, I think it's probably the smartest move. For me, I always, I always thought this would be the best play over here with your driver. Um, there's, there is a shot over to the right here. You never go that way. That's the hardest. Really, a lot of the reason why I put it out there was just to connect uh, the landmass to the next hole. But for this playthrough, let's 
let's go with the driver. We're gonna we're gonna give it a shot. Yep, that's gonna do. This is there clocking in at around 170. And yeah, that's also kind of why so I put dependent. that hole there and that waterfall there, because if you if you hit the shot that I want to hit on this, you get this nice little view of a waterfall in front of you. And just so you know, too, guys, um, waterfalls don't affect the ball uh, at all, so you can hit right through them. It's it's not going to affect how the shot goes. Oh, uh, so we got 171. Let's kind of send this, see how it goes. I knew I had a I had a little uh, backboard well done. there. Well so. that's another green and regulation under your belt. Eight footer so here I had to hit in the front of us. On that one. Good work out there. That's birdie number six today. Seven under par after that hole. And here comes hole number so four. So this whole this whole area was designed for this shortcut i knew in my head i, I like oh i want to do a shortcut through a waterfall hole like somewhere on this course i'm going to do it and so i had this planned out for quite a while this was going to be the area so really it turned out pretty well um trying to think what i could say about it um so it's tough for me to hit that. Um, on the settings I play at, I'm just not a good enough player to hit that every time. I think the best move personally on this course, you got to watch out for slag tights. Um, hit your five iron just right around here. It's perfect because if you get it that far, then you got a clean shot at the pin. And that's like the safest route to go. I If you want to hit your driver straight, you can do that. Um, but you're just going to want to completely de loft it. I don't have the, the blue arrow thing, but um, it puts it underneath that stalactite. So that's another really safe mood. And actually, I don't know if this is a designer thing, but I built this whole little rock kind of thing you see in front of us. The only reason I put it there is because I wanted to kind of make a wall between the two holes. Because this is such a, it's a, such a strange layout for for a golf hole. I mean, it's fantasies. You can do whatever you want, right? But uh, it's very unorthodox. And I didn't want people to look forward and think they were going further because that's the next hole. So I made a little rock wall hoping that that would kind of cut it off and show you that that's not the way you want to go. Um, also, this is a tee box I built for the next hole. You can see that there. Um, yeah, let me, instead of taking the shortcut and missing which I always do. Let's let's hit the safe shot. I'll show you how to hit the safest shot. Straight five iron. Wind's going That's in. Good contact on that one. Wasn't the best swing, but I guarantee it'll work. Okay, back in the fairway. Great stuff. All right, then we have because it's pin one. Like we, on we're all funneled in. It's perfect, you know. We could even we got wind with us, so we'll put a little bit of loft, a little bit of backspin, but I think we'll be golden. Perfect. Then we got ourselves oh, a birdie. Yeah, that was a then we didn't have to shot. stress well about the five times we so took good. to hit that waterfall shot. Nah, nah. Play it smart. And after that one, you are at eight under par. Teeing off on a short par five on this one. So uh, when I first started the, the course, this was one of the major uh, concepts, this hole in, in it general. It was one of the major concepts was I knew that at some point we were going to cross under a stair bridge. Um, it didn't, it looked nothing actually like in my head, it looked completely different, but we made it work. Um, the strategy on this one is the safest shots right here, right around here. Like it's so safe. You're going to be fine. No matter where if you hit it there. The issue is if you do hit it there, um, your driver off the deck may get there with the right wind, but probably not. So you're going to have to like lay up to one of these islands. Um, the slightly harder shot, but sort of a shortcut kind of that I sort of hit with rock. It's right in front of me. If you look on the left camera, um, it's right here, but I also sloped, I also decreased everything and sloped it inward so that if you did hit any part of this, it would keep you in there. That's probably the shot you want to hit the majority of the time. Um, but 
the main fun shortcut is through this rock here. Because if you hit this, you're 184 in, and that's, you know, the easiest way to go. And the thing about this hole, too, is um, originally it was going to be two staircases. But when I kind of thought it through, I was like, oh, I could, I could fill this all up with a rock and just leave a little hole. And that'll be the shortcut. And I think it turned out pretty cool. Um, but also to, I don't know if, I don't know if I've seen anybody point this out, but I threw a little arrow for you guys. If you look straight ahead, I threw an arrow <laughs> to, to let you kind of know that, Hey, look over that way. Um, I don't think it actually worked for anybody, but in this shortcut too, it's actually one of the easier shortcuts. It's actually super easy to hit. You just have to bend it in a little bit. Even with the wind in me, I'm, at me, I'm going to take this. I'm pretty confident I'll get it in there. Yeah, so like that's kind of bad wind coming at you, but it's still totally doable. Above this green, we might need a little less club. I think we can just hit this. Oh, if you look to the left, that's um, going to be the next T box that we're going to play. Basically, on that, I I just grabbed a very very basically T size. Uh, plot of land and I just raised it 250 feet up and then I just built a sterile spike face uh, spiral staircase all the way down and originally too I had the whole thing covered in uh, those greens but it I noticed that um, the shots that I was taking around this green were lagging there's a lot of lag in the game and I realized ah oh, fuck can't do that so I I spent like four hours erasing all the work that I had done on it. It looked really cool before. But that's another thing I should tell you if you're going to design courses is uh, playability is 100 100% more important than how things look. So you always have to make sure it plays well. That's like the number one thing. As much as it hurt me to do, I erased all that fun stuff on that tee box. Come on, kick uh, Safe approach. Nice. Okay. All right, 10 under par if you sink this. This next putt is for your birdie. Heads up. Wind's going right to left on this one. All right, guys. This is the least favorite hole of mine. This is the worst hole in the course. I've gotten a lot of hate about it. And it is deserved. It's I, I messed up as a designer here. I really did. So as I was saying before, I, I was pointing out that tee box I built. We're at the top of it right now. I spent four or five hours one day building it, and I was sure it was going to be tall enough, you know? Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but one of the first things I did was I built hole one looking at this big structure that we're seeing right there. Um, that, that big rock structure, but then I built that green up there at the same time because I knew that there was going to be a green up there eventually. I didn't know if it was going to be 18 or 16 or 15, but so I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, and then I spent a lot of time building this tee box that we're on right now. And it, and honestly, maybe I should have made it maybe 25, 30 feet taller. Um, so what happens is there's a few plays on this. If the wind's at your back, you could totally hit there bounce it off the rock or even get there and you're good. You can hit here. You can hit here. I was classic EP dick move. If you hit this too long, you're going to go right in the water. It's going to, that rough is not going to stop you. You're just, you're, you're done, which I don't regret that. I think that's fun. That's funny. Um, but it is slightly uphill. So you have to know too slightly uphill so i think i'm barely Great gonna swing. get there but then i curve it this approach is into an elevator so green. i knew that i had kind of messed up on this hole um for the beginner players because beginner players they don't even know what loft does or what backspin does they have no idea they don't know what to think about it yeah they have the blue line but they don't even look half the time um so my weak attempt at trying to make it better my mis my original mistake for the the whole layout how it is is i i wrote loft 
and I put an up signal um, in the rocks. I, I thought I blended it in pretty well. I think it looks pretty good. I've actually haven't seen anybody mention that it says that there. So I did a good job on blending it in. The issue is it's just too high for people who don't know how to play the game. That's all it is. It's just too high. You know, it's it's too high of a shot. You should never, you should never have to put this much loft and backspin um, on a shot to get it somewhere. Uh, so this is my mistake on this hole. So I, I do feel bad about it, but also it is what it is kind of thing, you know? Um, so I'm going to throw loft and backspin. My cat is just all over the place right now. Hey, buddy, you're... Yeah, yeah, yeah thanks. Thanks, pal. No, 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 no. There you go. All right. We're going to send it now. Murray says send it. Murray, Murray says send it. We're going to send it. a little it. bit to the left on the approach. Yeah, buddy. You want to say hi to the YouTube channel? Yeah, it's probably nobody, but... Uh, say hi. Here it is. Ooh, Ray Murray is like the best dude here. in the world. He's pretty much my best friend. He's awesome. Okay, this one's a. All right, far. so now we okay, are no, at the top, uh, the summit of uh, AP's Rock. Careful out there. Wind's going left to right on this hole. This is a downhill par three. Uh, I want to tell maybe newer players too. If you ever run across a hole like this, your best bet, aim for the center of the green. Don't get cute. Don't try to pin hunt. Just aim for the center of the green. I've seen a lot of people have problems with this hole. Um, I actually really like how it turned out. But um, if you... <clears throat> If you miss long, if you miss short, if you miss left, if you miss right, you, it, there's you have a, the possibility of ending up down on a previous hole, which I could not OB because that's a, you can't OB fairway from a previous hole. So a lot of people getting stuck down there. That sucks. Um, to the newer players out there, just know that if you ever hit a shot like that and you get stuck way down on a fantasy course, hit start. Hit declare unplayable, you can go right back to the tees. But if you take a shot and try it, you're fucked, you're done. Um, so don't do that. Also, to the people who are getting bad drops here and there, you can always hit the right trigger and it brings you right back to the tees or right back to where your uh, original shot was. So keep that in mind, everybody. It would save a lot of headaches for people if they knew that. And I don't know why more people don't know that, honestly. But they don't, so... I think 197 will carry. Like I said, I'm just aiming for the Beautiful center. Of the, ooh, that was a really awful shot, though. You know what? It's because I was aiming for the center of the green, right and I had a really awful shot is why I'm not OB right now, you know? Or down on hole 15 yeah, again. that went right by. And uh, this will be your par putt here. Down she goes. And this is a par five hole, pretty lengthy one. All as right, well. so well, we have to resume around because we're not getting the wind gauge. There we go, got a wind gauge. So the idea on this hole, it's pretty crazy. It's super long. I this doesn't mean you have something you have to do every uh, course, but I really like ending on a par five or a reachable par four or essentially just a hole you can really score on. I I like starting, I like bookending my courses that way. You start it, you end it with like really scorable stuff. That's a personal thing. You don't have to do it, but it's something I like to do. Um, so the idea on this one is you can hit it here with either, your driver might go too far. Honestly, sometimes your three will get you right here. Your driver, if you really bang it and you got wind in your back, you can hit this one. And then it's, it's a one shot to the green. This, you don't really want to hit the green from. The only reason I put any of this down here at all was just to kind of give the player bailouts if they needed, you know? So with the wind how it is, we aren't going to take that. We're actually just going to take three wood. Good job getting back in the fairway, taking yourself out of harm's way. 
And it's like, I think potentially I could hit it down there, but I'm not going to. It's just trouble. So, I'm just going to go somewhere safe around here. I'll Gosh. bounce out of there. I'll be fine. I like that. Setting up for our third shot. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to play this a bit of a pussy on this one, but I think sometimes it's needed on my courses. I think you, you're going to score way better if you don't fall for any of my tricks, well you know? Ten under if you can sink All right, we'll hit it in. We'll call it... Well, we're going to miss the There's last putt, then we'll call there. it a day, because why not? Up I didn't realize how the good of the score going. Here. Ding. I would have tried right. harder on that putt. Um, anyway, that was... Um, job well done. Hopefully, if the mic was working, that, that will be my go. first uh, I, uh, YouTube video for the channel. Let's see. I mean, if we have enough interest, I'd love to start you playing your guys' courses, doing other stuff. If I do want to do some tutorials at some point for just some basic, uh, just how to use the designer stuff. I have a few things in my head I'd like to do. Like, I really want to show um, some people how to start a course. I really am seeing way too many auto-generated courses, and I really want to personally put a stop to that no more auto generating courses let's stop that right away i want to do my part to stop that so i want to tell people about how to start a real course um anyway guys uh thanks for sticking around if you did this whole time this has to be like an hour video um we'll see if i make more i'll see if there's interest uh yeah thanks guys adios